one. Good evening and welcome to the Grand Prairie City Council meeting for Monday, December 10th, 2012. I'd ask everyone in attendance to rise and join us in singing O Canada. <laughs> for the images of our country and to our very own Grand Prairie Boys Choir for the audio. <laughs> We'd move into the adoption of the previous council meeting minutes. Councillor Crokin. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move the minutes of the city council meeting held November 26, 2012 be adopted. Thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Did anyone note any errors or omissions? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries, and that brings us to the adoption of the agenda. Councillor Monroe. Thanks, Mayor Given. I'll move that uh, Council adopt the agenda as presented with the addition of uh, item number 8.1, appointments uh, to boards and committees. Great. Thanks very much, <coughs> Councillor Monroe. Any discussion or debate on the agenda? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. And that brings us to the delegation portion of our agenda. This is the opportunity for anybody in the community to come forward and address council on any matter. And uh, we have one delegation that let us know in advance that they were going to come. Uh, the Honorable Wayne Drysdale, Minister of uh, Albert, Minister of Infrastructure for our province and MLA for Grand Prairie Wapiti. No stranger to the council chambers. MLA Drysdale, welcome. Well, thank you, Your Worship. As, as usual, I thank Council for allowing me to come here and present once a year. I like to come and hear what your thoughts are and, and more so hear what your questions are than what I'm not here to give you a big story. You usually read it, but it's always the interaction and the good questions that I, I appreciate coming here for. Um, <clears throat> and I also wanted to, uh, while I was here, thank you for coming to Edmonton a few weeks ago. I think you did a very good job of uh, letting my colleagues know some of the concerns of Grand Prairie, and it always helps me and Everett do our job if, if they hear the same thing from you guys. So appreciated that very much, and it was well received. Lots of good comments from some of my uh, colleagues out there as well, so thank you for that. Uh, you know, our government is com committed to building Alberta's economic future and, and supporting families and communities and communities such as this and the good work you're doing. I know probably some of the biggest pressures I see here and hear from the public lots in Grand Prairie is our schools and our lack of, I guess, or need some more uh, infrastructure in schools. So I'm hearing that loud and clear and I'm sure you are as well. And so. Uh, working with my colleague uh, Jeff Johnson, Minister of Education. Hopefully we'll have some good news in the new year on some, some of those schools here. Uh, as you know, we did the sod turning in the fall here for the new high school. You know, and it, you might think that 
it's it's the high school, but what about the elementary? But it does move down to grade nine now, so that moves the elementaries, takes some pressure off them as well, because now they'll be K to eight instead of K to nine. So, so you know, even the high school will actually help the elementaries as well. But <clears throat> we know we need to build some more schools there. There's no doubt about that, and and uh, also. Uh, the hospital. I don't know if any of you had the chance to go to the open house. That was a week or so ago, and I, from what I hear, it was well received and good information there and positive comments. So I think that's going to be great for our community and city new regional facility, which which will be good. Uh, you know, I think uh, you guys just are in the process or have gone through your budget presentations and that's kind of what we're doing as well now out there and things are tight we you know with the differential on the oil we've lost quite a bit of income from our projections this year or going into next year so it'll be a tight budget but uh, um, we're still going to do what we can to to build infrastructure I mean we <clears throat> we've never had a problem balancing the operating operating budget it's always the infrastructure in the building that seems to seems to be where we balance our budget is on the back of infrastructure so we've got some ideas hopefully we can still build some good e infrastructure in the next coming years with some <clears throat> alternative financing uh, we also passed uh, 10 pieces of legislation this fall maybe didn't hear much about it but there was some good bills passed uh, some of it will affect the city as well uh, the elections act bill seven um, I also wanted to congratulate you on that. I hear uh, you'll be taking part in the electronic voting possibly coming up in the next election as a pilot project. I think that'll be a really good, useful tool for the community. I'm interested to see how that works out for you. And I think there's lots of uh, lots of room for expansion on that in the future, so good luck with that. Uh, I guess I'm still waiting for my letter on the Young Offender Center, but I hear it's coming, so we'll deal with that as we come. And thanks for your presentation on that in Edmonton. <clears throat> so probably with that, I'll just open it up to questions, if anybody has any. Sure, by all means, uh, Minister Rysdale, thanks very much for making the time. Um, we certainly appreciate having you here and appreciated uh, both you and uh, Emily McDonald uh, spending time with us in Edmonton and, and really uh, we know that both your schedules are very busy, so to sit through the entire day and back us up as we met with each of the individual ministers was certainly appreciated, I think, by our by our group. And we know that you'd just come in from Toronto the night before and uh, had a few long sessions at the ledge, so uh, your commitment to making sure that the region was well represented was really appreciated. So uh, questions for, uh, for, for Wayne? Uh, Councillor McClain? Uh, thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Thank you, Wayne, because you come every year, and uh, it's very look forward to it as well. And Edmonton, I have to say, you're one of the most gracious, uh, open ministers that there is. And uh, I want to thank you for uh, uh, all the council when we were into the legislature, uh, when you were debating, and you made us everybody uh, stand up and announce that Grand Prairie Council was here. So that that meant a lot. I just had one question on, um, and the one thing that was brought out in the city too, how Grand Prairie is so young and. Uh, growing, uh, children under four are just as many as seniors 65 and older in the city. So when you were saying about the schools, it's a very important issue. And um, I, the one I wanted to get is, what bill was it for, uh, uh, I don't know, Bill 5, Bill 7, you, like you said, you passed 10, that uh, is for public works, it's a whistleblower's bill, I guess. Uh, what bill is that one? Uh, that was Bill 4. The only... Four. Bill 4 was the Public Interest Disclosure Act or Whistleblower Protection Act. Okay, and the only question I got from different people in the community, uh, I think it was just regulated to public workers. Uh, it was kind of vacant on private industry or whatever, like if you've seen an issue and you could bring it up. Um, that wasn't brought up or anything, it was just public work? Yeah, it was more for public employees because the, you know, the private employees have the have their other act that they follow under the uh, 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 it's a different, but I, Employment Standards Act. I've case. been asked about that because it yeah. just seemed like why wasn't it both together? Thanks. Well, they were covered before the private yeah. employees. This just covered public employees. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Councilor McLean. Um, 
Minister Drysdale, um, just wanted to uh, make a couple notes. I see there's some other council members in the queue, but uh, thanks very much for your support on Bill 7. Uh, the uh, four-year terms were contained in there, and obviously that's something that was a City of Grand Prairie resolution at AUMA a number of years ago yeah, and right. uh, was supported at AAMDNC, and so it's nice to see that actually become legislation. Um, and I also just wanted to express my support around uh, the question of uh, future infrastructure needs. Uh, Mayor Melissa Blake had a really great uh, op-ed in the Edmonton Journal uh, speaking about smart debt, and really uh, I hope the province is uh, considering when you speak about alternate financing um, I think uh, we expressed the opinion to all party leaders when we were in uh, Edmonton at the legislature that uh, I think by and large the community of Grand Prairie would be supportive of uh, having mortgages on buildings if it meant that uh, that our kids were going to be able to get into school. So I just want to take this opportunity to publicly express my support for, for that position. Uh, I think that's shared by all of our council and we certainly were happy to express that to your colleagues from all parties when we're in the legislature. Um, and so I think you're hearing that from, from across the province that um, there's a willingness from Albertans to see um, uh, the infrastructure and facilities that they need and it's reasonable to have those costs spread over a few generations. So please, by all means, uh, pass on our support to that to all your colleagues. Right. Now, that was a good article by Mayor Blake, like you pointed out. If anybody gets a chance, they could read that. But thank you very much for that support. I know City Council, you use the opportunity to finance some of your projects or they wouldn't happen as well. So yeah, thank you for that. Definitely. Uh, Councillor Cogan. <coughs> Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Thanks, Wayne. Yeah, that was a, a, a good meeting with your with you and your colleagues out in uh, Edmonton. And thank you very much for supporting the Highway 43X. Uh, we are going to be annexing out that way. Uh, and it's uh, in the process. It's in full speed now. But uh, I really appreciated when you uh, have brought up, and I have mentioned this to a few uh, citizens that they didn't know the figure that you had said that the traffic count on Highway 43, uh, 43 going through the city of Grand Prairie is about 42,000 units a day. is a higher traffic count than Highway 63 up to Fort McMurray. So thank you for that. Uh, I know the minister, <laughs> I don't believe Minister MacGyver knew that uh, fact and thank you very much for making it uh, him aware of that fact. So. Hopefully, I, w I know the three-year budgets and everything is tight, but uh, I know they're, uh, they're sure looking at, at uh, the large trucks anyway to get them uh, traveling around uh, the city. We, we still want tourists and people coming into the city, but mm -hmm. it would be nice to get those larger trucks just for safety reasons. We do have the new hospital, and that's a dangerous uh, truck route or dangerous goods route, so we wouldn't want any kind of an accident uh, along our new, by our new regional hospital. Right, and as I said, our budget is tight this year, but uh, MLA McDonald and myself are doing what we can to make sure that's at the top of the top of the list, and thank you for that support as well to see that. Councillor Wong? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. <coughs> Wayne, I, I want to echo, first of all, uh, the sentiment of thanks from my colleagues to you for all your support out in Edmonton when we're out there during our, or throughout our advocacy efforts. Um, it's nice to hear when we're talking to the ministers that they have spoken to our local MLAs and, and the same message is being portrayed throughout the ledge. So that's really necessary for us to know that we have local representative there at all times, uh, even if we can't be there. Um, my question has to do with Highway 43, but on the east side of Grand Prairie, just this side of Valley View, uh, can you give us an idea of the timing for completion of that highway? Yeah, well, the, the one section, as you know, was closed. You know, we were hoping it to be completed this fall, but that contract, you know, it's it was, I think you had some projects in the city as well. They got caught by our early winter this year by a month. So they, they had good plans of having that finished this fall. So I don't think it'll take long next spring to get that first section completed. And uh, the contract on the next piece or the final piece, piece is out there right now. I hear it's just waiting to be signed. And so that, you know, if things went well, it could be completed in a year, but I think it's a two-year contract and it supposedly will be signed this winter. So so by the end of 14, I would hope the whole thing is finished and next year for sure, the first half will be paved all the way. Okay, yeah, I know there's a lot of people out there just anxious for that 80 kilometer an hour zone to be <laughs> finished with. So thanks very much for that. Yeah, thanks. Any further questions, Councillor Radford? 
Thank you, Mary Given. Uh, Wayne, just, uh, uh, I just wanted to, to sh we have done this already with uh, Sherry, but I wanted to, in a public forum, just uh, make sure you thanked her on our behalf. She was, she is an excellent ambassador for Grand Prairie and area, and she demonstrated that at our reception. And so, I just want to really thank her for, uh, for helping us out. Thank you for that, Lauren. I'll make sure I pass that on. That's great. Uh, any further questions? Um, Wayne, if, if not one other, uh, I don't expect a, a ton of detail, but uh, just to convey to you um, how important MSI has been uh, for our community and, and obviously communities across the province. Uh, the program is up for renewal, and I know the Premier and the Minister have said that they're uh, uh, looking at renewing the program, but certainly we wanted to express that, and I don't know if you have any uh, information you can share on sort of where the government is with MSI. Well, I, I think for sure most of you in the room were at the AUMA convention this fall when the Premier, you know, confirmed that we wouldn't be balanced our budget on the backs of municipalities and, and, you know, we're committed about increasing MSI. You know, with our tight budget this year, how fast that increase is, I guess we'll see, but I, I don't expect a decrease, that's for sure. I expect an increase. And, you know, it would be nice if we got there quicker, but uh, we're still committed to the to the final number there, and I expect a, a, some kind of an increase in next year's budget as well. That's great. Thanks very much. And, and also, too, um, we had opportunity to meet with the Associate Minister of Municipal Affairs, and if you can pass on uh, to your colleagues in caucus, uh, it's appreciated and, and not lost on communities like Grand Prairie, Medicine Hat, Lethbridge, Red Deer, and the, and the like that uh, in the Associate Minister's uh, mandate letter that he has a specific responsibility for ensuring that the views of mid-sized cities are reflected in government policy. Um, that was not lost on any of my colleagues across the province, and we're certainly very appreciative for that high profile for mid-sized cities. So. Yeah, and he was very supportive after, too, and he told me he'd have that piece of business done before Christmas, so we'll see how good he is here. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Well, Wayne, I don't see any other further, uh, further questions, but thank you very much for taking the time out of your schedule to be here. We know that uh, your time at home is limited and, and very precious, so we certainly appreciate you uh, choosing to spend some of it with us. Thanks very much. Good. Thank you. You do a very good job of representing this city, I can tell you that. So thanks very much. Thanks very much, Wayne. Merry Christmas. So, as I said, this is the delegation portion. You don't have to be the honourable uh, just to show up. You could be any community member. Um, any community member can come forward and address council during the delegation portion. It doesn't look like we have anybody else coming forward. So we would move on from the delegation portion of our agenda into public hearings, which we had none. We had no unfinished business, and so that brings us to our uh, added item, item 8.1, boards and committees. Uh, and I, we would start with uh, appointments to the Grand Prairie Public Library Board. Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I would like to recommend Council approve appointments to the Grand Prairie Public Library Board. Uh, Shirley Shirkoff uh, be appointed to the Grand Prairie Public Library Board for the remainder of a term ending December 31st, 2014. As well, Dave Logan, Wade Nellis, Lynn Coulter, and Nevin Baker uh, the four of them be appointed to the library board for a three-year term ending December 31st, 2015. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none on the appointment of those community members, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. <coughs> and that motion carries. Uh, that takes us on to the appointments for the Take Part, Take Pride Committee. Councillor Monroe. Thanks very much, Mayor Given. I'll move that uh, Jason Zelling, Stephanie Bockers uh, be appointed to the Take Part, Take Pride uh, Committee for one year terms ending December 31st, 2013. And that Jessica Elliott and Lorna McElroy be appointed uh, to the same committee ending December 31st, 2014. And finally, that Amy Horn, uh, our representative from Aquaterra, Miriam Manick, and Jennifer Bowen be appointed to the Take Part, Take Pride uh, Committee for three-year term, for a three-year term ending December 31st, 2015. Thanks very much, Council Monroe. Any discussion, debate on those recommendations? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries, and that brings us finally to the uh, Council Remuneration Committee. Councillor Wong. 
Yes, thank you very much, Mayor Given. I move that members Kim McDougall, Tricia McCloskey, and Warren Travasso, appointed to the Council Remuneration Review Committee, be extended to end on March 1st, 2013. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Uh, just to speak to that briefly, the committee's original mandate was to the end of this year. Uh, they've requested some additional time to do that work, and so Council is extend extending the, uh, the recommendation is to extend their term uh, to be able to enable them to complete their work. Any further discussion or debate? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, that was all of our reports, and that takes us to committee business. And uh, we have um, some set of minutes from Council Committee of the Whole from November 14th. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mr. Given. I would move the Council receive the minutes of the Council Committee of the Whole meeting held November 14th, 2012. This was a Council Committee of the Whole meeting talking about land use bylaw changes and, the, and discussions surrounding those changes. Uh, yeah, it's a point in time. A uh, draft will be completed here in the next few months and brought to Council more formally at that time. Thanks very much, Thank Councillor Radburn. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Did anyone note any errors or omissions? <clears throat> Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. We have uh, 9.2, Council Committee of the Whole Budget Review Minutes. Councillor Rice. I move that Council receive the minutes of the Council Committee of the Whole Budget Review held November 23rd, 2012. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Errors or omissions? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Rice. I move that Council approve the funding strategies as amended for the 2013 operating and capital budgets. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. I wonder if um, Mr. Anderson could give us a brief overview as a reminder. Ken? Thank you, Mayor Given. Previously, Council agreed to a 3.7% property tax adjustment for 2013. That's been reduced to 3.6%. For the average house of assessed the $267,000, that would be a $98 municipal tax change for 2013. Okay. Thanks very much, Ken. Uh, any further discussion or debate? Questions or comments on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, we'll move to 9.3, Combative Sports Commission. Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I recommend the Council receive the minutes of the Combative Sports Commission meeting held November 26, 2012. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes, errors or omissions? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. And that motion carries. Councillor O'Toole. Yes, uh, we have some uh, bylaw changes I'd like to give. Uh, recommend the Council give first reading to bylaw C1173B, its amendment to the Combative Sports Commission bylaw. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. So a motion for first reading, I'll call for the vote. We'll have a motion for first reading, and then on second reading, we'll have discussion and debate. Okay, thank you. That motion carries. Councillor O'Toole? I can give an outline if you'd like. If you'd like to make second reading, and then... Okay, then we'll uh, count, I'd like to make uh, second reading uh, to bylaw C-1173B. There you go, and if you'd like to give us an introduction... Yes, we've got uh, a number of bylaws that needed to be updated to current uh, requirements. And if you were looking in your uh, your uh, bylaw schedule A, there's uh, license fees for promoters, the con the contestant, and uh, for each event we uh, reviewed those. Also, schedule B, uh, the other fees that uh, basically we needed to. Uh, uh, increase for uh, for reasons of uh, medical personnel and uh, also the second medical personnel and uh, reinstatement fees we looked at notice of appeal deposits a fee for a referee per bout per person fee of voluntary supervisory personnel per person uh, fee for the judges per bout per person and the fee of contestant 
for late weigh-in. The last event that we had, a number of contestants were late. Uh, they were scheduled to be at a certain time and it forced the commission to work a little bit later uh, and hold up a whole bunch of people which cost us some money. And also a uh, fee for late submission to the contestants medical paperwork which also was a bit of a, a hindrance. Um, also Schedule D, we have member reimbursement rates and I th think that was it. If there's any other questions, I can take them. Okay, discussion and debate. Councillor Rice. Uh, explain to me the rationale is that should the promoter wish to host an event in a facility other than a city-owned facility or the tech center and use a ticketing agent other than the crystal center, an additional financial security will be required. Uh, and it was it's like 10% or something. Yes, I can give you that, and then actually I will I'll talk a little bit about it, and I'll pass it off to our Mr. Gary Roth. Uh, the concern in the past is the Crystal Center has uh, required a deposit uh, in case there was someone that was to uh, walk out at the last minute, and the requirement was uh, for this event, uh, we book a doctor, we book medical staff, we book hotels and other areas of importance that require money deposits and if they walk out there's nothing to support them and the city loses. So the requirement by Crystal, Guard, Crystal Center was to uh, hold that as a security deposit and we decide, we as a commission uh, were asked by other promoters well what if we don't hold it in the Crystal Center and uh, we've increased the fees uh, that when you purchase a license. So uh, part of that license is the commission takes care of booking the doctor and everything? Yes. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, any further questions, discussion or debate? Councillor Rasburn? That was good. Um, yes, Helen actually had uh, one of my questions, uh, I guess I just noticed in the minutes that Mr. Cliff suggested that in his opinion the Crystal Center ticket arrangement should be changed in the Commission bylaws, so that gave some background to, to that feedback, I guess. My other question was, uh, I see in Schedule D there's member attending an event outside of Grand Prairie, an immediate area. Um, who decides who goes to those such events? Council Does the Council? Chairman of the Commission decide who, uh, what would be productive in terms of uh, learning opportunity or do each does each member decide on their own? Just uh, a little history on that. Uh, this past year there was a, a Canadian Combat uh, Commission Association uh, that had a, an annual general meeting in Vancouver. So uh, as, as a commission member for Grand Prairie, I took myself and the vice chairman and also we took one other individual that's been a long serving person and we went down. Uh, the other long-serving person uh, <clears throat> with a lot of knowledge has been appointed to the Alberta board and represents Alberta as a, as a nation. So my question is who decides? Uh, Does the commission chair decide? I made what that decision. Okay. With I mean, in a go-forward basis, yeah. we're not talking about what's yeah. happened. No, what's happened is uh, I, I discussed it with uh, administration here and uh, we made that decision. Oh. Okay. Uh, further questions? Councillor Rice? Does, does the Commission have like money, a budget, anything? Councillor Tool? We are for profit. So you have your own bank account. So if you go to something like this, would, would the Commission pay for it or would the City? Audrey, Council. would you like to touch on that, please? Mr. Ernie, if you could clarify. Thank you, Mayor Given. The uh, commission members are appointed by the City of Grand Prairie and the events that they have attended either as learning events or to further the sport of uh, the Combative Sports Commission in Grand Prairie has been, um, expenses have been paid for by the City of Grand Prairie. So do they have a budgeted amount in our budget? Uh, it's part of the uh, travel and meeting expenses 
there is no separate budget at the moment, no. Okay. Hasn't that budget just been disbanded? No, the budget is the same. So if you're asking about council's meeting and travel expenses yeah. budget, councillors? Yeah, no, that budget line item still exists. We made no changes to it other than the way that it was allocated amongst yeah. council members. Uh, there is, is still an allocation to be able to handle uh, these types of uh, committee appointments. But what about the other committee members? Is comes from where? It comes from the same pot of money. None, none council members. How do you mean, sorry, none council members, sorry. So you're asking when we go to an event and we pay the public, the, the public members to yes. attend? That comes out of the, uh, the fees that we collect as well okay. for the event. So, so the, the commission generates its own revenue into the city's budget? And, yeah, but we also, you know, uh, float them. I guess you could say for. Okay. For Thank you. These types of things. Yep. Any further discussion, or debate, questions, or comments? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote on second reading. Thank you. Okay, and so motion, uh, Councilor Tool. I'd like to have council have third reading of bylaw C 1173B at this meeting. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. So, motion to have third reading uh, is required if uh, the intent is to have all three readings of a bylaw uh, at the same meeting. Uh, this motion must be unanimous uh, for us to move on to third reading. Any discussion or debate on the motion to have third reading? I can just. Councillor O'Toole? I'd like to just make a couple comments here. Uh, we have done a lot of research uh, regarding these fees and uh, the schedules and stuff like that. It's not something that we just come together with and decided these fees would be inappropriate. Uh, they are something that's in the nature of the business. Okay, thanks very much, Council Tool. Any discussion or debate? Motion to have third reading? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor O'Toole? Thank you very much. I'd like to have council give third reading to bylaw C 1173B. Okay, thanks very much, Council Tool. Any further discussion and debate on third reading? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, council Tool, was there anything else that you wanted to highlight from that set of uh, Combative Sports Commission minutes? Well, we just, uh, we do have, uh, we had a delegation from Mr. Deere and Cliff uh, at Excessive Force Fighting Championships. He will be having an event earlier on in the new year. Um, also, uh, Five Star Athletics Incorporated will be having a, a, an event here February of this next year. And um, yeah, I think uh, that's pretty much it right now, sir. Okay, great. Thanks very much, Councillor Tool. Uh, we'll move on to 9.4, the Public Works Committee, and uh, Councillor Gustafson isn't here. So, Councillor Radburn, can you handle that set of minutes for him? Mm -hmm. Councillor Radburn. Certainly, thank you. I would move Council receive the minutes of the Public Works Committee meeting held November 27th, 2012. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing none, on call for the vote. Thank you. Councillor Radburn, anything you wanted to highlight? From that Certainly, uh, Mayor Gibbon, thank you. Um, I guess we dealt with a, a development permit to variance for a uh, commercial business center, business office support service uh, that is permitted in the Ontario Commercial District. And that's kind of a, uh, a long resources road west of the tracks, east of the resources road in that area there. Uh, secondly, we uh, approved a discretionary use for a development permit for a retail store with gas bar and liquor store. Uh, in the local commercial district, and that's about 92nd Street, 91st Avenue in there. Um, and thirdly, we uh, received a report on transit terminal concepts and location, and we uh, actually uh, asked the, that report be brought back to committee after stakeholder meetings uh, have been held. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. So we'll move on to 9.5, the Environment Committee. Councillor Monroe. Thanks very much, Mayor Given. I'll move that uh, Council receive the minutes of the Environment Committee meeting held December 3rd, 2012. Thanks very much, Council Monroe. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? 
Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Sorry, Councilor McLean. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Given to Councilor Monroe, just on a uh, quick fact, uh, I wasn't able to make that meeting. And just a question I have, um, there was the fact that I didn't bring up before about aqua terror and about commercial use into landfills and how residential now have the blue bag and keep them recycled out. Um, do we know figures on uh, the waste that commercials bring into our landfill? Uh, could someone, Michelle, answer that? And uh, uh, it's kind of dropped off the base. Is there anything? We hear raising uh, taxes or levies for residential, but we don't hear much about commercial. Sure. So at this time, we're just doing the minutes. So uh, do yeah. you have any discussion or debate on the minutes? Not on the minutes. No, I wanted to okay, so we'll maybe follow up on that after we oh, finish yes. the committee business. So any com comments on the minutes? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. Okay, that motion carries. And uh, Councilor Monroe, you had one item of business coming out, and then we can follow up on uh, Councilor McLean's. Uh, uh, Councilor yeah, absolutely. Monroe? I can make that motion, and then I can talk a little bit about uh, what Councilor McLean's uh, asking. Uh, I'll move that uh, Council formalize uh, their support for the Aquaterra City of Grand Prairie Landfill Gas to Energy and District Heat Project in the form of a letter from Mayor Given. Um, and just to speak briefly about this, uh, Aquaterra has already proceeded with a landfill gas to energy uh, uh, district heating project. Uh, the project involves a bioreactor landfill gas to energy and generator heat recovery pro uh, project. This project provides benefits including uh, decreased electricity and heating costs for the treatment plants and increased life of the landfill. Um, so I think the intent of this motion is to, uh, I guess, uh, uh, achieve uh, successful grant funding through the uh, uh, green municipal funds. Um, and uh, by writing this letter, it indicates uh, not only our support, but that the city of Grand Prairie would be essentially a partner in this project. Uh, and the grant funding, correct me if I'm wrong, Michelle, is uh, uh, upwards of $10 million that they're uh, applying for. Sorry. Ms. Gardner? Um, the grant is for a million dollars, but there's funding available up to $10 million, part of that which would be a low interest loan. Thank you. Great. Thanks very much, Ms. Gardner. Okay, any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. I think that was all the items of business on that environment committee meeting. And so, Councillor Monroe, um, I don't know if you can speak to the uh, question raised by Councillor McLean. Um, certainly, I can. Uh, I, I can try a little bit here, uh, Mayor Given. Um, so, uh, the construction and demolition uh, waste has been on our outstanding items list for uh, quite some time now, uh, and that is, uh, uh, I guess, uh, basically what we would deem the commercial uh, waste. That uh, uh, at least this is what I understand that you're asking, uh, Councillor McLean. Um, anyways, uh, we did have a look at it, and we've asked the administration to uh, go back and have a closer look at. Uh, uh, at what other uh, municipalities are doing uh, in regards to this, and we're expecting a, a report back uh, shortly. Okay. Councilor McLean. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilor Monroe, for that. I just, uh, I'm sitting on the Environment Committee almost two years now. I don't know why we're delaying and waiting and more studies. There's actually communities in Alberta, Canmore, through Alberta Recycles. They're actually re diverting waste of 80% on apartment buildings, homes, and we are way, way behind. Um, of having proper regulation in and 80% of the landfill that goes landfills from construction. So hopefully we will hear something positive, but hopefully it's not four or five years and hopefully something happens because there is communities in Alberta that are way ahead of ours on this issue. Okay. Um, Councillor um, Monroe. <laughs> Sorry. Um, th thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Um, Councillor McLean, I, I, I think that the uh, rest of the committee does feel this, uh, or does have similar uh, sentiments to you, and uh, we certainly look forward to uh, seeing a report coming back uh, in the near future. I think one of the other items that was noted at the meeting where we discussed this was uh, that Aquaterra has actually, uh, on their own, put in uh, a significant amount of diversion. Uh, they have source separation of wood materials, metal materials. Um, and also uh, drywall recycling as well, which is something that they've initiated over the last couple of years. And so uh, in addition to what the committee was looking for, there was uh, some relatively new initiatives that we'd seen 
uh, that we're having a positive impact. Aquaterra, a few meetings ago, had also mentioned that they uh, are have had some relative success with the implementation of their uh, uh, residential recycling for multifamily units. Uh, they'd mentioned that uh, when they launched the Blue Bag program, it was obviously aimed at single family homes. Uh, it took a little while for them to get their uh, multi unit dwelling program up and running. And my understanding right now is that all of the multi unit uh, buildings that wish to participate at this time are participating. Um, all the others have the option to, um, but some, for various reasons, uh, sometimes related to the amount of space available around the building have chosen not to participate at this time, although the option is available to them. So, so I know you were uh, looking at construction waste, but you mentioned apartments uh, and diversion, I guess, in general, and uh, Aquatair has made some good steps in ensuring that all Grand Prairie residents have access to basically residential uh, recycling that picks up from wherever they live. Councilman Pine? Thank you, Mayor Gim, for that. And you're right, they have started things, and the star phone's good, but it's in baby stages. And uh, looking forward to some very good input, hopefully for the next election, because it's baby stages. Thank you. Councillor Wong? Yes, thank you, Mayor Given. I think what uh, Councillor McLean was alluding to was when we were at the Alberta Recycling Conference, um, they did a presentation on construction and demolition waste. And Grand Prairie is no different than other communities. Our, it, commercial waste makes up about three quarters of the uh, volume at the landfill, which is a significant amount. So no matter how much we as individuals try to uh, make a difference, we can only affect that 25%. Uh, there's other municipalities like Wood Buffalo who are forming or they're, they're taking an initiative to get rid of their construction or as much of their commercial waste as possible and they're funding it through, uh, through the carbon offsets that uh, their new initiatives are going to create. So they believe that um, in the long run it's going to be a self-funding venture. So that's maybe something that we could bring to Aquaterra at their next business meeting or their uh, shareholders meeting, that maybe this is the next step for us and they could use Wood Buffalo as a model. Hmm. Interesting. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Okay. If there was nothing further on the Environment Committee meeting, then we move on to General Government Services from December 4th. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'd move council receive the minutes of the General Government Service Committee meeting held December 4th, 2012. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Anyone note any errors or omissions? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, uh, Mayor Gilman. I move council authorize the City of Grand Prairie to participate in an application for the shared internet voting pilot project under the regional collaboration component of the regional collaboration program and further that the city of Grand Prairie a participant agrees to abide by the terms of the conditional grant agreement governing the purpose and use of the grant funds. This is I guess formalizing our decision at budget time. We uh, made that decision at budget time. This now uh, provides direction for uh, administration to proceed with uh, accessing that grant. Thank you. Thanks very much Councilor Eberin. Uh, discussion and debate on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, anything else we want to highlight? Can I set a minute, Councillor Radburn? Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I, uh, three other things we received for information in uh, Myers Norris Penny's audit service plan for this for the 2012 year. It'll begin early in 13. We received for information a facilities master plan update and received uh, for information uh, uh, the OSB Big Press Center project and where it's at. Thank you. Great. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. I believe that finishes all of our committee business. We had no items of correspondence. Uh, our delegation business was uh, simply the presentation from Minister Drysdale. I don't know. We maybe we could have a motion to receive his presentation for information. Councillor Crokin. I move we receive uh, Minister Drysdale's report for information. Thanks very much, Councilor Crokin. Uh, discussion and debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, we had no notices of motion tonight, and we have do have a couple of council member reports. Uh, Councilor Crokin, I believe you had Peace Library System. Thank you, Mayor Given. Just a couple of quick little highlights. Uh, Linda Duplessis, our, our director, 
uh, presented the board with the reviewed the 2012 financial forecast. Revenue and expenditure, expenditures throughout the year fluctuated, uh, but should result in a deficit of just $6,500, which is $10,000 less than budgeted down on a, over a million dollar budget. That's, she's doing a, a terrific job. Uh, the, the one thing that was brought up, the, uh, the director reported, uh, Linda again, uh, that former Peace Library System Director, I'm sure a lot of you knew her, uh, uh, Patricia Job, passed away October 10th, uh, 2012. <clears throat> Pat was the director from 1989 to 1995. She oversaw the transfer of the University of Alberta Extension Collection to the Peace Library System. The negotiation of the first automation system contract and construction of the new building that we're presently in. In honor of her memory, <coughs> the Alberta Library, TAL as it uh, they use, has renamed its award for outstanding service as the Pat Job Service Award. So, very honored to uh, to uh, have her get that. She was a hard-working lady. So that's all I have for uh, Peace Library. Thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Uh, Councillor O'Toole, I believe you had uh, South Peace Regional Archives Society. Yes, I do, Mayor Given. Uh, just uh, we had a little bit of a meeting here the other day, and uh, we got some accessions that uh, showed up between September 1st and November 30th. Just to give you a highlight of some of the records that we have been uh, receiving, uh, we have the Westerdorf family photographs. They date back from 1937 to uh, 1946. Uh, Larson's Garage in Eaglesham, uh, 1953. Um, Let's see what else we got here. Uh, the NRA photographs, 1920 to 1985. We got some papers here that date back to 1914, the 1962 time capsule that the city of Grand Prairie had. And we have the Blueberry Creek School reunion records. So those are just some of the uh, the efforts that have been are now stored in the in the archival uh, bank that we have at the museum. Also, uh, we've just produced another little short booklet of some stories that uh, have taken place in the peace country. And uh, if you do not have one of these little booklets, uh, you can go and get them down at the, uh, or the museum. They will be posted also in the library, and we may even have some here at the City Hall. Uh, we're trying to make sure that they're available. And one of our, a uh, couple of our staff down there and board members I have drawn up this little cartoon uh, comic book type thing that uh, it basically implies that uh, there's a lot of records out there that most people feel is just junk or garbage. It's not history, but anything from old clubs, fly tires groups, bowling clubs and that sort of thing, school records, and it just shows where the interest is and, and uh, it's kind of cute. And I'd like to thank... Uh, Gordon and Leslie for producing this, and we'll have some of these at the, in fact, we have some upstairs, and uh, they'll be in and around the area as well. So, thank you very much. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole, and, and I note the uh, Telling Our Stories uh, booklet is actually, it's a always a really good read. Uh, I believe it's also available electronically on the South Peace Regional Archives website, too. Yes, anytime you want to look on the website there, I've got documents on how many times we've actually had hits. And we've had 4,962 hits in the last uh, three months. Sorry, from January to November. That's great. Thanks very much, Councilor Tool. Um, unless there are any uh, council member reports from external agencies or boards that I missed, then we'd start with Council Roundtable. Maybe we'll start with Councilor Wong since he's way over there on the corner by himself. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. <laughs> On uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, November 27th and 28th, I attended with Council and the Mayor, Council Day at the Legislature. I would have to say it was a fantastic evening. The first night that we were there, we invited the college, the uh, home builders, the school board trustees, um, al along with ourselves. And we, uh, we made quite an impression, especially with that great big map of Grand Prairie and the Chamber of Commerce as well. Thank you, Councillor O'Toole. Uh, Thursday, November 29th, in the morning, I attended the unmanned vehicle presentation for G-Prep. Uh, I also was at the 
chamber mixer at the Showcase Center, formerly known as Ovation's Dinner Theatre that evening, as well as the GP Regional Hospital Open House at the College. Friday, November 30th, we had our Council Committee of the Whole meeting. Uh, Sunday, December 2nd, I participated with other members of Council and the Mayor at the Santa Claus Parade. Uh, I really do commend those people that uh, stuck it out with us at minus 20 weather um, with a little bit of a breeze. Uh, smaller turnout than usual, but uh, everyone was still very enthusiastic to be out there. Uh, Monday, December 3rd, uh, I was at the East Link Centre for the proclamation for International Day of Persons with Disabilities. Got a chance to sit in a wheelchair and, and uh, play some basketball as well as work on those crank bikes. And I even got a chance to use one of those motorized wheelchairs, which I thought was uh, a really neat experience. Uh, I w later that day, I also went to uh, the Grand Prairie Regional College and had an interview with one of their consultants for their long-term vision. Uh, December 5th, uh, our Wapiti Corridor Planning Society had a small informal meeting as well as a little Christmas gathering. Uh, Thursday, December 6th, I was at the uh, Chamber of Commerce AGM at Centre 2000. And I want to congratulate uh, the new president, Shauna Miller, and, uh, and the rest of the board members for the, for the upcoming year. Uh, Friday, December 7th, we were at the uh, annexation meeting with the county. And finally, just this morning, I read some books and and played some games at the kids' place at the Dave Barr Community Centre. Great, thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Councillor Rice. I attended um, the reception at the uh, with our legislative assembly representatives uh, and the people that Councillor Wong uh, has mentioned. It was. I think very impressive to see the all facets of the Grand Prairie life uh, at that, uh, and I think I think our MLAs were impressed. Want to thank uh, the Honourable Wayne Drysdale and MLA Everett McDonald. Uh, I think the, their presence uh, uh, certainly uh, send a message to the other MLAs. Attended the, the Volunteer Services Bureau. Uh, Volunteer Awards uh, Breakfast. It was, of course, uh, I had breakfast served by the ever industrious Councillor Monroe. And uh, congratulations to Jennifer Douglas, the Volunteer of the Year. So uh, it was great. I attended the uh, Council Committee at the whole meeting on November 14th on the Land Use Bylaw on November 23rd um, on uh, Council Budget. Uh, I thought it was extremely interesting, a few facts that are a little out of date at this point, but uh, it seems to change by the hour this year. So as of December 4th, um, we had used 1,000 tons of salt. Uh, the average annual use is 1,700, so we are over half. Uh, through our average uses, but that might be because we had up till the 4th 101 centimeters of snow and the average annual snowfall is 158 centimeters. So uh, I don't think it'll be any surprise to all of us as it keeps every time you look out the window, it's coming down. Uh, so I think uh, so far we've done a, a real good job of staying on top of that in a very, very difficult year. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Councillor Crogan. Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, looking out the windows, I can't. The snow has covered my windows. Uh, on, again, on November 27th and the 28th, I was also uh, with Council in Edmonton at the open house uh, reception, which we had a map of the city of Grand Prairie, which was uh, uh, laid on the floor and it gave a real different perspective of where the things were in the city of Grand Prairie, like our new hospital and our bypass and whatever. And it was nice to see the, the opposition uh, also, Danielle and, uh, and Raj, show up to have a look at what's happening up in Grand Prairie. Then on the 29th, I went to the information se session at the college on the hospital. It was very, very informative. And then 30th, I uh, got an annexation update. And then uh, December the 1st, I attended, that was Saturday, I attended the Peace Library Executive General Meeting. On the 2nd, of course, I 
went along with the Santa Claus parade and there was uh, an abundance of children out there that braved the weather and uh, I want to thank Jody. She did a really good job with the candy canes and made sure our pails were full and uh, we were uh, we were handing them out uh, quite generously. I know one counselor was. Uh, a couple of mine stuck together but uh, then on the uh, on the third, I was at the uh, East Lake uh, Center also for the proclamation of the uh, International Day of Persons with Disabilities. It's really uh, something else to work out on one of those hand upside down bicycle things. It was, it really works your shoulders. What did you call it again? Oh. Crank bike. Oh, crank bike. Yeah, upside down bike. December the fourth, I had a pursuit of excellence meeting. On December the fifth, uh, seven thirty in the morning, I attended along with. Uh, other members, the annual volunteer breakfast at uh, Golden Age Center. Uh, of course, the Rotarians did a good job, and Helen walks away with a nice big door prize. That was really good. Uh, later uh, that day, I was at a subdivision appeal board hearing, and a little later, later that day, was seniors' Christmas dinner at the Golden Age Center again. December the 9th, I uh, went to a, a birthday party. One year birthday party, and I brought some donations for the food bank at the East Lake Center. One year uh, it's been open and what a party they were having there. They had cake and, uh, and, and drinks and they were demonstrating on our, our dry field there. The, uh, there was hula hoop uh, gals doing demonstrations, uh, dancing, yoga, um, just all, all kinds of things that were, were happening there. And they didn't participate. No, I, they didn't have a big enough hula hoop. And uh, today I also was reading a book at the kids' place, the story reading at the Dave Barr, I read uh, Dr. Seuss, ABC. There's more different names in there than I, they weren't there when I had the Dr. Seuss and Green Ham book. So that was it, uh, Mayor. Great. Thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Councillor Monroe. Thanks very much, Mayor Gibbon. On uh, 27th, 28th, uh, I was also uh, part of a uh, council that uh, went to the legislature and uh, uh, I think it's already been said, but I, I think it was really an outstanding event. The 29th, I attended the, the Chamber Mixer at the Showcase Center. I also, uh, shortly after that, I went to uh, GPRC where I got an update on the hospital and uh, I've got to say I'm quite excited about uh, uh, what they've got in store for that hospital. I think it's really going to be quite a fantastic site. Uh, on the 30th, uh, I uh, took part in the annexation info session for, for Council. On the 3rd of December, I uh, went down and uh, tried uh, down to the East Week Center for the uh, proclamation of the International Day of Persons with Disabilities and uh, tried the crank bike uh, while sitting in a wheelchair and I've got to say it's, uh, I was surprised at how much of a workout it actually was. So uh, it, was, uh, it was quite a nice event. Um, did uh, breakfast for the volunteer services breakfast? Uh, Volunteer Services uh, uh, annual breakfast at the Golden Age Center and once again congratulations to uh, Jennifer Douglas on a job well done over the course of the last year. Uh, later on that evening I was uh, back at the Golden Age Center bringing, bringing greetings on behalf of uh, Mayor Given and all of Council to the uh, Golden Age Center's uh, annual Christmas party. On uh, the 6th, I attended the uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, annual general meeting and uh, just wanted to say thanks very much to uh, Rob Neal, the uh, now past president of the Chamber of Commerce. I think he uh, did a fantastic job over the course of the last year with the Chamber. Uh, attended some more annexation meetings on the 7th and I think that was actually it. Great. Thanks very much, Councilor Monroe. Councilor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, I was also at the legislature on the 27th and 28th, and a lot has been a lot of good things have been said, and I definitely agree. It was uh, definitely worth uh, the city going out there and talking to the MLAs from all over the province of Alberta, so they have an understanding of what we're up against. On um, what do I got here? On the 29th, I attended the uh, regional hospital information session. And uh, once again, good things. I'm very excited about the future there. On uh, Saturday the 1st, I attended uh, World's Aid Day Proclamation Reading and Film Festival at the Grand Prairie Live Theatre. Uh, we have uh, Councillor Radburn gave greetings on behalf of yourself. It was a very informative me uh, video uh, presentation that they showed with some good discussion prior and after the viewing. On the 2nd, I uh, went to the Santa Claus Parade and handed out can 
Candy. And I want to thank Jody once again and her daughter, Isabella. She probably worked as hard as we did, uh, filling the buckets and stuff like that. Shortly after that uh, parade, I uh, went down to the Wapley Shooters Club and tried to shoot a turkey, which actually was just a piece of paper, um, but I was unsuccessful. It was all done by luck, not by skill, okay? Clarify that one right off the bat. Yeah. And on the uh, 3rd of December, I attended the International Day of Persons with Disabilities proclamation. And uh, yes, we ended up doing a number of uh, uh, events, uh, exercises, and skills while we were in a wheelchair. And uh, let's see what else we got here. Breakfast on the 5th, uh, volunteer day. And also later on that night, uh, the Golden Age annual Christmas party uh, was uh, was actually quite a nice event. There was uh, some talent at towards the end that uh, was local that was actually quite interesting and quite good. And uh, you know, we stayed uh, till quite late actually. And uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, the, the 29th, I attended the Chamber AGM, and congratulations to our new or the the new person that uh, is now the president. And Rob Neal, thank you very much for a job done very well. On the 7th, we've got the Self Peace Archives that I attended, and I left that meeting and opened tenders here at City Hall. On the 1st, no, on the 8th, I, uh, I got a call from Santa Claus, and he needed someone to help him out, and uh, he said I would fit the description, so I helped him a little bit on Saturday. And uh, I can't tell you these things. North Pole, all right. Helen, there's certain <laughs> things that you're not privy to, okay? And on the 9th, my grandchildren come over and help set up our Christmas tree at our home. Mm -hmm. And today, we, uh, a number of us went to Kids Place and read stories and uh, participated in some preschool activities. So we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much, Mayor Gibbon. Thanks very much, Councillor Cole. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, November 27th, 28th, I was also in Edmonton with the team. Um, I think Aquaterra was, uh, was uh, there too, and I'm not sure if we mentioned Aquaterra, but Baron Manns and uh, Board Member Chris LeBossier was there. And uh, I, I really do think that having the community uh, representatives joining our team was, was very effective. Uh, I also attend the uh, unmanned vehicle project uh, meeting for a little while to get a bit of an update uh, that Jennifer organized. Um, went to the new hospital information session uh, on, the th on the 29th as well. 30th, City Council Committee of the Whole. And uh, uh, because of that, I did miss the Grand Spirit Foundation meeting, but uh, I've been since uh, been informed that I am... Uh, been elected as vice chair again, and I'm on the Labor Management Committee and the Labor Negotiations uh, Committee. December 1st, World AIDS Day proclamation. I was uh, pleased uh, to be able to share that on behalf of Mayor Given and Council. Uh, thanks for uh, to Kevin and Kathy for joining me that evening. And uh, Santa Claus Parade. I also wanted to thank uh, Jody and her daughter for their yeoman service and keeping us uh, uh, stocked, shall we say. Um, and also, I thought our float was excellent again. I think we, I think, uh, we have a good uh, person to work with in that regard. Um, International Day of uh, Person with Disabilities Proclamation and Exercise Class. Wasn't expecting the exercise class. Thank you to uh, Councillor Koken for being my my uh, my coach and uh, and supervisor. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. December 5th, Volunteer Service Bureau Volunteer Day Celebration Breakfast. And I also, uh, uh, fellow Rotarian Jennifer Douglas, thank uh, congratulations to her. And the Golden Age Christmas Party. It was uh, really a nice evening. A nice evening. Good group of people to be with and to chat with. Chamber of Commerce AGM. Uh, I concur with... Uh, Councillor Monroe, I think Rob Neal did an excellent job as uh, president, and now Shauna Miller. Good luck to her and her committee. And uh, was part of city-county annexation discussions on the 7th. 
Thank you. Thanks so much, Councillor Redburn. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mary Gibbon. As well, I was with the team on November 27th, 28th in the city of Edmonton, and it was quite well organized by the community, and thank you, hats off to the mayor for having this open house because it really means a lot when you have the chamber there, public and Catholic schools, aqua terror, construction industry. I think we didn't have quite half MLAs, but pretty darn close that showed up in there that to, to view and to talk. Uh, Rod Sherman, leader of the Alberta Liberal Party, Daniel Smith, uh, Wild Rose, Deputy Premier was there, Speaker was there. There was a number of individuals there. It went over really well that evening. But one of the highlights as well for me was meeting with the ministers and our concerns, and we heard 43X brought up tonight and other stuff. Uh, hopefully it's sooner than later. Um, was that we were introduced by the Honorable uh, Minister Wayne Drysdale as a team, and we all stood up. But one that caught me by surprise as well was uh, leader of the Liberal Party, Rod Sherman, introduced me for running in the election. But not just me, he mentioned my wife, Tina McLean, and my children, Kendra and Kara McLean. And uh, because it is a family when you're running that are behind you and help you in democracy. So I thought that was pretty good. And we learned something sitting at one of the meetings. It's all on uh, camera in the legislature when they're doing the bills and everything. But they also do a book per sitting. So every word, everything is recorded and videoed. And so it was pretty neat to see that. <clears throat> As well, I went to the, the new regional hospital information session. Um, I brought my children, Kendra and Karen, my wife Tina came as well, but we didn't realize it was gonna be an hour and a half of speaking. We thought it'd be 10, 15 minutes and view displays. But we did view the uh, overfill room with um, how the hospital's gonna look in 3D. And the one thing I really liked, there's gonna be four bays for ambulances as well. As you know, the new one here, the, or the older hospital has one bay, I believe it is. And they might be able to fit two in. So I'm hoping maybe there might be two standbys in there that they can go to that area of the city to help. I don't know uh, how that's going to be. Maybe some other councillors can answer that. But it's definitely see four bays for ambulances would be, it's very crucial, I do believe. Um, November 30th, I was also at the City Council Committee as a whole on annexation. And um, looking forward to getting it done. It's going on and on. So hopefully someday it'll be done. And... Uh, I also attended that the same day and made it barely in time for two tender openings. One is for the 100th Ave uh, rehabilitation on the bridge. It's over 50 years old. If you walk underneath it, uh, you hope not a piece of concrete fall on top of you. Uh, it looks like uh, it's going to public works tomorrow, and I believe uh, there was eight or nine tenders on that project. So uh, whichever one's picked, uh, I look forward to getting started, commencing this winter and being finished in the summer because... They say it could last another 40, 50 years once it's done. So the bridge has already done a major lifespan as well. And also the other tender was for DTS, Disability Transfer Service, uh, two buses. There was a, three tenders in or something for that. And they hold 10 people six for six individuals in wheelchair, wheelchair and for four walk-ons. So I think that's going to help our community immensely once we get... Uh, get the tender out and it comes to public works. I don't think it's coming tomorrow, but maybe after that. And they get the buses for the summer. Uh, it would be really good. As well, I attended uh, Santa Claus Parade. Um, thank you, Helen. You really deserve lots of uh, big pat in the back. I did give you a candy cane walking by when you're outside during the cold weather. It wasn't attended as well as the year before. Otherwise, I think we would have been close, not running out of candy, but also uh, commend uh, some city staff members that really worked their butt off on that. David and Jody uh, do really well. And uh, uh, like I say, it was very cold that day. So the ones that did short turn out were dressed well. And December 5th, I also attended the Golden Age Christmas celebration. And uh, thank you, Councillor Monroe. Your uh, Deputy Mayor greetings for the mayor was very well received. As well, when I went the year before, it wasn't as many there, and I think the cold weather affected some individuals uh, attending. It was still very well attended, but there was the one before you could even barely move. Um, I have to throw one more thing. Uh, we all know Saturday night was pretty darn cold, <laughs> and Sunday there was uh, my wife Tina is involved in the Grand Prairie Run Club, and there was about 40 individuals that came out Sunday morning for a run at Mississippi Park for... Uh, raise money for food bank it's more just for fun and being in shape and they raised about 600 bucks and collected some food so way to go all you is involved in that and I, I just want to say a thank you to Robert Carroll and to our snow removal crew like Councillor Rice was saying let's be honest we've had a big dump of snow 
they've done a very good job. And like I tell a lot of people in the community, like for years, you're lucky to see a grader once down the, your main road. I've had it once this year. So winter hasn't started, so I'm hoping to see it a couple more times. And I do believe once it stops snowing, they'll be down the residential streets and cleaning them up. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Um, so uh, obviously I attended in Edmonton with the rest of the members of council and our community partners on our advocacy mission. Um, back in Grand Prairie on the 29th, I also attended the uh, uh, presentation on the regional hospital and health and education center. Uh, the thing that stood out for me the most was that that was the first time that I'd heard a, a, a solid commitment to the parking structure. Uh, there'd always been sort of a space for it and it was great to hear the announcement that uh, that would open in conjunction with the hospital that the structure uh, housing, I believe, 1,100 parking stalls uh, will be in place. And so I know that that was a community concern. It was good to hear that there finally is a commitment to that. Um, I also was at the Santa Claus Parade downtown, and I'd like to echo my thanks to uh, Jody and her daughter Isabella for keeping us all straight and uh, going. Uh, on the 5th, I was also at the Volunteer Services Bureau breakfast for uh, Volunteer Day. Um, and later that day, I was able to attend at the Comps at High School and uh, give a presentation to the Comps leadership class. They have a combined uh, 10, 11, 12 class, and uh, it was great to speak to the, the youth about leadership uh, both the ways and the ways that they can be involved in our community. On the 6th, I was also, of course, at the Chamber AGM. It was my honor to swear in uh, new Chamber President Shauna Miller. Uh, congratulations to her and her team and looking forward to working with them in the year to come. And later that day I was at uh, Mother Teresa at Mr. Samard's grade 5 class to participate in the tobacco free, tobacco free kids program. Uh, I think I was invited by the uh, two nursing students that were running the program. It was the fourth of four days for the students. Um, and I was there to uh, share a little bit of my perspective from City Council. I was able to tell the kids about our uh, new bylaw that restricts smoking within uh, distance from parks uh, and share the challenges that our parks department have with uh, cigarette butts and how they don't biodegrade. The kids uh, certainly appreciated that and uh, I had the chance to be able to help them hand out their certificates of completion for going through the program. I don't think it was intended that way and uh, uh, but uh, all the kids enjoyed being able to do the official uh, handshake and pose for a photograph and Mr. Smart had to take photos of every student and I've noticed a few of them popping up on Facebook already. Uh, and then of course I was also in attendance at the uh, annexation meetings on Friday with the county. Uh, if there is nothing else for our meeting then I'll, then I'll call our meeting adjourned. This is, thank you Councillor Rice for the reminder, this is our last meeting of the year and so um, from everybody on council uh, and uh, to everybody at home, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, and we'll see everybody in 2013. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.